Hello and welcome to the Cotswold Bees channel. So this is the first video that actually involves an inspection in 2021. It's mid-April, it's a warm day, it's round about sort of 15 degrees C and we're ready to inspect. You'll see the bees are flying really freely and there's no problem for us actually to get in there and have a look at what they're doing. Now I tend to leave my inspections a bit later than most people. I like the bees to build up a bit and make sure they're fully going before I actually get in there and start doing an inspection. Hopefully they won't have expanded too far because I've actually got some spare frames here to replace some of the old dirty frames from last year. So what we're going to do, get the smoker lit, we'll get into our suits and pop over to the hive and have a look, see what's going on for our first inspection of the year. So here we are outside the hive and we're going to do the usual thing, which is actually to look at what's going on outside the hive first before we actually go into it. I'm just going to move the smoker out of the way, it's going rather well. So if you look here, we've got no dead bees on the floor. We've got bees going in and out. And in fact, we've got a bee here with pollen on her legs. And we've had several bees going in with pollen. We'll just hang about, see if we can see some more. But those bees going in with pollen, that's a sign that we've got a laying queen. There you can see bees going in with pollen there. I want to come back with some pollen on her wings, but no pollen on her legs. Here we go, there's some pollen going in there. Just, you can see the pollen on her legs by my finger there. So that's generally speaking a sign that we've got a laying queen. So that's a really good sign. Bees are moving around well, they look healthy. So that's a good start. So we're gonna do our inspection in the usual manner. So I'm gonna start with my smoker. As usual, tiny bit of smoke in the front, just enough to announce our presence. And hopefully that's gonna be all we need. But we'll see what's going on. So round to the back of the hive, Take the roof off. Take the crown board off again into the corners. Remember very, very gently. If you think you're being too gentle, be a bit more gentle. This crown board's gonna come off fairly easily. So I've actually got two crown boards on here because I've been feeding these bees. So I'm gonna take this second crown board off. I took the actual empty super off that was round the feed about a week ago. And just in preparation, but I haven't actually been into this hive and you can see they've got this board well stuck down. There we go. I just want to remove it here. And you can see where I've actually had the feed on that was a block of fondant, they've eaten all of that. We may need some more food, we don't know, but probably not. So I can take that off and here we are. Let's have a look at what's going on inside. So I'm just gonna pop that out of the way. And we want to come along. Usual thing, take out the dummy board first and pop that out of the way outside the hive and then take the first frame out. And if you remember, just to remind you, hold the frame there, hive tool goes in there, twist very gently, again, twist very gently, draw it back towards us, lift, and have a look at what's going on. Now here, this is still empty. All of this is empty. And this side though, you can see, they've started to put pollen in, uh, nectar in rather. And you can see it glistening there. So we've got, actually got nectar in, and we've got drones already. So it's an early season start. So sign of drones, we are going to have to start thinking about swarm management fairly soon. So there we have it, nectar coming in, uncapped, it's not honey yet. So we put that down out of the way. Again, just hold it there, very gently open up, pull it back. This one's heavier. And this is full of brood. So here we've got all the brood. The flat brood is the young worker bees, the female bees under there. You can see in these cells here, larvae curled up beautifully, pearly white in the bottom, which is what I'm looking for. I've seen some more drones here. There's another drone there. They're quite small, these drones, which is interesting. That one's a bit bigger. And we can see here, the dome cells of the drone cells where the boys 
the male bees are developing underneath there. And we've got some more drone cells here. So that's a good frame of brood. So I'm going to hold that, put it up to the vertical, turn it away from me and inspect the other side. And again, exactly the same. I've got some younger larvae in there. I've got a queen cup here. Now I don't think there's anything in it. You see it's pointing down. Let me open it up. Absolutely nothing in there, it's dry. So that's not a sign of swarming as yet. They're doing rather well, these bees. So I can pop that one back in there. Move on to the next one, again, cap it. Got a few bees here, so I can just pop my finger there. Move them out of the way. In there, in there, absolutely fine. And again up, always holding it over the hive. Lots of nice flat brood there. I've got some open cells. I've got some nectar in there, all doing very well up to the vertical. Turn it, inspect the other side upside down. Much better sized drone here. Much bigger lad there. Again, all very smooth, nice and capped, level. No signs of any problems, no signs of disease. Just what we want to see. Can't see any varroa mites at the moment. Here's some more pollen going in. You can see on her legs there. That might be dandelion, no, probably not dandelion pollen. It's a bit too yellow for that. Frankly, could be anything. Pop this one back. And I'm just going to get Carol to move round to the side here because she's in the flight path and lots of bees are queuing up behind her. She's causing a bit of a Heathrow pre-trauma problem. They're, they're now all coming in at the front, so that's fine. Now this is an old frame that I wanted to change, but I might have left it too late. I have. There's lots of, um, lots of brood on there, so I'm going to have to move that. Here's the queen with the, the uh, green spot on her head. She'll probably do with remarking. She's quite small, uh, but she's obviously been laying very well, so she's still going well, so we'll let her carry on. I'm actually going to do something that you shouldn't really do now. I'm going to take this frame and I'm going to put it at this end here. And the reason for that is that when this brood has hatched, I can actually change it. I should probably have done it at the end of last year. And uh, then it would have been at the end to start with. And uh, if I'd have been doing things properly, that's exactly what I would have done. But just to show you that we all make mistakes, I'll put it there. You should never really split the brood nest, but I do want to change that frame because it's very dirty and it could do with changing for, for this year. So moving on, we've seen the queen, we've seen eggs, we've seen lava, all looking very, very good here. Won't be all that long for, this one's a super actually. So I can lift this one out. Lots and lots of brood here, all beautifully flat. Some nectar in here. Nice drone there. So they're all very busy. No sign of queen cells, which is good. They're not contemplating swarming at the moment, I hope. They can't be far off though. They're doing incredibly well. And again, some pollen stored up here. You can see the yellow pollen in these cells here, ready to feed the young. All good stuff. Pop that one back. Again, finger just in there. If you don't want to put your finger in, don't forget, just the tiniest puff of smoke will move them out of the way. You don't want to be using any more smoke than that though. That really is more than enough. In with the hive tool again. Pull it back. Lift. Have a look. Yeah, not so much brood on this one. And this one, again, is one I'd really like to change. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Quite a lot of brood on this side, which is unfortunate, but I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to put it back here. So when, it, when the brood emerges from here, I can actually use this frame. The other thing is that if they do decide to swarm and I decide to, or to try and swarm, and I decide to do a split, I can use these frames. So, and if they do decide to try and swarm, we'll, we'll show you what we do in terms of either splitting them or doing an artificial swarm. 
We were going to do that last year, but these bees were very compliant. They didn't try and swarm at all. And it's always the way, if you want them to try, they won't. So just hold it there again, very gently. And just to remind you again, I'm beekeeping with my ears. I'm listening to the sound. It's quite loud here actually today. There's lots of bees flying around. There's no problem. The pitch is nice and low. They're really gentle. So lifting this up again, lots of nice brood there. All nice and flat, all looking good. Up to the vertical and turn it round. Again, it's a bit dark this one, but it's still in quite good condition. So if I get a chance during the season, I might change it, but it looks pretty good. So that's absolutely fine. Always good to look just down the edges there. They, they're gonna put a queen cell quite often, they might put them there. Another bee here with pollen on her legs. You can see very clearly there that she's brought in. And here's all the pollen stored in that area there. Popping that one down again. Just a few to go, but it's important to do them all. So we're just going to pull that one back, lift it, have another look. Now that one's very dark, very little brood in there. That's good, so I can take that one out of the way. Yeah, that's all pollen that's already emerged. Really nice big drone there though. So again, I can put this one towards the edge. I'm gonna pop it on the edge of the, the hive there and I'll pop it in when we put the, the frames back. A lot of people wouldn't change a frame like that, but frankly, once they start getting to that level, I like to change them. If you're gonna have a build up of anything, it's gonna be in the old wax and bees tend to do better on new wax. Now there's dandelion, I reckon that's dandelion pollen there. Can't confirm it without an expert and a microscope. You can see how orange it is. Very, very different to the yellow pollen on these here. And yellow pollen, frankly, to anybody but an expert, could be literally anything. We know what's out this time of year. There's quite a lot of blackthorn out. There's a lot of cherry out at this time of year around here. So it could be any of those. Here you can see again, just moving the bees out the way very, very gently with the back of my hand. So I can see all beautifully flat capped or domed where she's been laying. Now she's been laying a few drones in the middle here. So she might be starting to go, go off a bit these days because of the mild winters and they're laying a lot more than they used to be. She's starting to get on a bit. She's starting to get towards pensionable age. So let's just have a look at these last two frames. Pull it back again, always beautifully gently. This is all pollen in here, underneath these bees here. You can see all the different colors, all the different types of pollen they've been bringing in and storing separately. I'm just slightly concerned that those Small drones might be drones that have been laid in worker cells. And if they are, that's a sign that she might be coming towards the end of her laying life. And we might be thinking about replacing her this year. You can see again, the difference in pollen, yellow here next to the orange, very different. There's a sort of greeny gray one there. And then just have a look at the last one here. Move those out of the way. Just pull it back, lift it. Almost nothing in here I can tell. You can see there, some, there's some nectar. You can see where the entrance block was during the winter and they put a big mass of propolis here to actually stop drafts. So that's propolis, bee glue that they've made from tree resin. And they've done that to reduce the drafts in the winter. A bit like a, a bee draft excluder. So there we are, it's all looking good. Except, you know, I am a little bit concerned about that queen, so we'll just see how we go as we go through the, the season. We can't do anything at the moment because there's no drones around that are flying really uh, to start mating. But we might, we're gonna start thinking about rearing queens fairly soon. And uh, when we do, it might be that this hive gets a new queen. And if it does, obviously we'll make a video and uh, you can have a look at that and see how we get on with that. And we will be doing some videos with regard to queen rearing this year as well. So 
if you're looking forward to those, please subscribe to the channel, maybe even press the bell so you get notified when we're going to do them. And uh, if you've enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up. All these things really help us with, with YouTube and getting our videos out to more people. I've got a new Queen Excluder, or not a new Queen Excluder, it's the Queen Excluder from this hive that I took out last year. I've cleaned it up, given it a blast with a blowtorch and repaired bits that were falling to bits. So i put this back on, nicely like that. I can take the crown board and pop that back on. Now I want both of the ventilation holes open, so I'll take that port of escape out. Pop that in there in my pocket and then I can just put the roof back on and keep an eye on this. This is going to need a super fairly soon so we're now into seven to ten day inspections with this hive assuming the weather holds and very soon we'll be looking at, uh, at a super. So there we go, first inspection of the year, a success. All the bees are doing well and we'll keep an eye on that queen so keep tuning to the channel for more updates as we go through but we'll be doing seven to ten day inspections hope you enjoyed that if you did please give us a thumbs up if you're not already subscribed please subscribe and we'll look forward to seeing you again at the next beekeeping video which will be very shortly so thank you enjoy your beekeeping during the summer and let's hope for a really nice summer with plenty of warm weather rain at night and loads of honey now I've got my bee suit off, I'm just back here with a cup of tea and um, of course even if you've only inspected one hive you've got to have a chocolate brownie, the recipe is on the website. That's not really what I wanted to mention though. If you are getting into bees and you're really interested, please pop over to our website and have a look at our online courses. They're a great way of having a beginner's understanding of bees. And so there's two courses on there, 101 questions a new beekeeper should ask and also an introduction to beekeeping. Of course, if you are going to start keeping bees, you do need to go on a handling course. We do those as well, but your local beekeeping society will do them. But if you do fancy something a bit more advanced, pop over, have a look at our courses. We do the face-to-face -face ones and we do the online ones. And the great advantage with online ones is you can do them in your own time. So if you do fancy that, pop across to the Cotswold Bees website, click on courses, online courses, and you'll find them there. Thanks very much again for watching and we'll see you next time.